and welcome once again. It's, it's always a pleasure to have you here. It's always a pleasure uh, to be uh, here, William. Good morning. Yes, good morning. And a lot of things have happened, I guess, in the last month. Uh, one thing is the passing of Roosevelt Taylor at 87 yeah. years old, and I think most people in the community knew him. Maybe you make some comments about your relationship with him. Well, you know, I, I, I don't even know where to start, William, quite honestly. Roosevelt Taylor was... Uh, for those of us in the community that were fortunate enough to have known Roosevelt, uh, there are no words really to describe Rosie. You know, he was just an incredible individual who gave his uh, uh, heart and soul to the city and uh, to the country, actually, and with his service to the military. And he was a treasure that will be missed. He served on many boards. He volunteered all over the place. I had never heard the man say a cross word. Never saw him without a smile on his face, and uh, uh, Roosevelt Taylor was just a real asset to this community that will be sorely missed. Yes, and I, I knew him uh, when the Westminster Presbyterian Church has the annual Christmas dinner, and he used yeah. to come and help cook. Yeah, and I was yeah. doing pots and pans, so I got a chance to stand next to him. And yeah, it was a wonderful experience to yeah. to, to, to interrelate with him. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, he was a true gentleman. Yes, he was yeah. in, in in every respect, and. Uh, and, you know, I, I actually, uh, really the first time I, I met Roosevelt in, in person was, uh, I was a police officer many, many, many years ago, and I worked a, a, a robbery at Roosevelt's house where a, a young man had broken in and actually stabbed Roosevelt and uh, stole some money from him. And, uh, and so that was the, uh, my, my very first uh, meeting with Roosevelt. But uh, from that moment on, I had lots of dealing, not dealings, that so it gives a negative connotation, lots of contact with Roosevelt that was just incredibly positive. And uh, we ended up catching the young man, Roosevelt survived, and, and everything turned out good. But uh, I was in his house at, on that occasion, and uh, it was like a, a, a memorial or a shrine in, in there. He had pictures with himself and all kinds of dignitaries, and it, it was just, uh, again, you know, there, there really aren't proper words to describe uh, what a fabulous person Roosevelt Taylor was. And he was sort of laid back, but he had this uh, real <laughs> sense of wisdom. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it was very reflective. Uh, yeah, that's true. And thoughtful. That's so very well. true. That's, that, that's very true. He was like a, uh, everybody's grandpa or something. I mean, you just wanted to be with Roosevelt. You wanted to talk to him and wanted to spend time with him. Yeah, certainly. Uh, and we, he will be missed. And yeah. uh, I did attend the funeral, actually. Yeah, uh, good for you. I yeah. couldn't. I was actually... Uh, I, I couldn't, but uh, uh, certainly thought about it. Well, I, I belong to a veterans organization. We usually come sometimes to, re to pay our respects to mm -hmm. uh, veterans who passed away, and it was a pleasure to go to the church yeah. and, and be a part of that. Uh, just something I, I missed. Uh, well, uh, we were just talking about this a little bit before, about your guest conductorship with the band <laughs> last month. and uh, <laughs> You know, uh, I didn't realize that you had the capability and the musical skills to conduct a band. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> You know, Bill Shepard, uh, who was another amazing uh, gentleman that we have in our community who directs the municipal band, uh, he does this, uh, it's not uh, just me, with every mayor he dedicates one evening for a guest conductorship and uh, it's, it, it's one of the job, one of the parts of this job that's just fun. And, and Bill is, is a tremendous fellow, so I have uh, no uh, uh, musical uh, talent in any of the bones in my bodies, but it's fun, and we, we get to kind of have a little fun on each other, and it's just a fun job. Yeah, I did that three or four weeks ago, and it's it's just it's one of the things that I'll really miss. Well, and, and it's really nice to know that you can stand up in front of a leadership position and know that everybody else knows their job but you. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's just amazing. I mean, I wave my arms, and, and uh, I don't know what they're doing out there. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great opportunity. Yeah. Municipal Band is a really a great tool treasure because uh, they play now at the band shell yep. on Thursday, so mm -hmm. it's once a month, I think it is. Yeah, yeah and, that, and that's something that uh, I'm glad you, you brought that up, uh, William, because it is. It's uh, the Waterloo Municipal Band plays down at the amphitheater every Thursday. It's free, and it's incredible uh, entertainment for mm -hmm. a couple of hours to go down there and on, on the days that are nice, and most of them are. And you can sit down there and just listen to some wonderful music, totally free, right on the river. Uh, it's it's just a, it's it's a treasure, and it gives you appreciation for what that facility is all about yeah. because there's more to it. There's places for the kids to play in yeah. the water and that sort of thing up on the they have fountains yeah. or something, and of course very adequate parking. Yeah, and it's it's a, it's a it's a good deal. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and believe it. Uh, maybe people won't believe this, but the sound is really good. Down there. Oh, it's it's yeah, it is. I mean, it's amazing. It's, it's, uh, 
think about that, but yep. uh, yeah, worthwhile doing it. And actually, there's there's boat docks so people can take their boats down, tie up, and listen to them yep. come there. Yep. Yeah. And do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's just very interesting. Uh, a little different subject. Uh, I just want to mention this too for our listeners. Um, there was a story in the Courier about uh, the boys and girls clubs and the YWCA, I think, or the YMCA, where people were selling mm -hmm. candy mm -hmm. uh, out in front of Walnut, which was not associated with mm -hmm. that. That's a scam. I have had people come to my house selling candy for the, in the name of a church, which they weren't really representing. Mm -hmm. And we also know that we get phone calls from people claiming to be from Mid America and uh, want you to pay your bill right away, mm -hmm. right on the mm -hmm. spot or else. Uh, also, people who claim to say we've detected a problem with your computer and we want to uh, help you. And I, I know a lot of us are pretty aware that that's happening, but we've got to look about our parents, our grandparents, and maybe even some of the younger people to, to make them aware that, mm -hmm. that there are people out there that really aren't legitimate. Mm -hmm. I know one of the things I do when somebody comes to my door is I ask them for their solicitor, solicitor's uh, license. Yes. And uh, quite often they've forgotten it, or their boss didn't give it to them, or, yeah. or they have some kind of excuse. Yeah, and, and, and that's true. And folks that go door to door in the city, uh, other than like the, the Girl Scouts, the little kids and stuff like that, way, are supposed to have a solicitor's license. They are supposed to come to the clerk's office and register. And the clerk's office does a fairly extensive, although quickly, uh, a background check on these folks. And they should have a license. They should have name tags and so forth if they are a legitimate organization. And it is incredibly unfortunate that it's been going on since the dawn of time that people do take advantage of people, and I'm sure will continue to do so. So it is incumbent on us uh, that we watch for those things and that we do take care of our elderly uh, 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 relatives and neighbors and so forth because they seem to be the ones that be are preyed upon the most. But uh, I, I have seen those folks out in front of Walmart selling candy bars and so forth, and you just kind of assume that they are legitimate, and uh, in fact, uh, those, the group that you brought up, are not legitimate. And uh, I hope with this exposure that that's put an end to. Yeah, one of the other things too, you get calls from an organization say they're representing uh, the disabled veterans. Yeah. And oftentimes those organizations yeah. contribute very, very little to yeah. those causes. Yeah, and, and you know, they, they always pick causes that pull on your heartstrings in order to get into your pocket, so just be very careful with that. Yeah. And speaking of things that pull on our heartstrings, uh, I wanted to mention the Grout Museum is opening up an exhibit, yeah. uh, 365 and counting, which is, of course, as anybody knows, if you were a veteran, when you get a tour of duty for a year, you have a calendar and you start crossing off the days. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were at the opening of that, were you not? I was at the opening uh, when they opened the exhibit yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, a, it was a fabulous event. Uh, and uh, even at that, you know, the emotion when those veterans talk about Vietnam or talk about the experience that they had in Vietnam, the emotions are still very raw uh, all these years later. And uh, I was uh, born and raised, you know, right through that age and, and experienced uh, Vietnam, but I did not, uh, was not in the service. I uh, was part of the lottery back then and I uh, just uh, threw whether either good luck or bad, I'm not sure which, drew a very high number in the lottery and uh, uh, went and took my physical and, and never had to enlist. I was never drafted and, uh, and I didn't enlist. So I wasn't uh, a veteran, but uh, uh, this exhibit uh, is really incredible. It's two years in the making by a particular family that actually started it innocently enough uh, by just uh, uh, getting the names of every Iowan that died in the Vietnam conflict and trying to get pictures of those people. And that's kind of what started, that was the impetus to, to start this uh, Vietnam uh, uh, exhibit at the Grout Museum. Now there's always been in the Grout Military uh, Museum, there, there's always been a piece of the Vietnam War there, but this is an entire exhibit dedicated completely to the Vietnam War, and I think people are going to find it uh, incredibly moving and interesting and emotional, and I hope people take the time to go see it. Well, I just want to comment, too, because if people didn't live through that era, yeah. um, as, a, as, a, as a military veteran, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was in the military active duty 65 to 67, so oh my, yeah. when you come out, uh, you are not respected. Yeah. In fact, um, and I, I'll tell you this, I always like this story because it kind of captivates it. The Courier, a number of years ago, was interviewing a father and son, and the son had come back from a deployment, I think, in Iraq. Yeah. 
and the father had served in Vietnam. I remember this. Yes. Yeah. So they asked the son, what's it like? He says, well, you know, you come back and you eat in the airport, people want to buy you dinner, they want to buy you beer, they thank yeah. you for your service. So they asked the father, said, how was it when you came back? He says, well, flight attendant asked me if I was in Vietnam, and I said, yes, I was, and she said, too bad you didn't get killed there. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 yeah. it's more than, for, for Vietnam era veterans, it's more than just uh, the wounds of war. That's bad enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, the fact you served your country and all this, and, and then you come back to a, a country that doesn't appreciate or yeah. value what you've done, in fact, actually yeah. disrespects it. Yeah. So, it, And that it, was so real at the time, William. I, I remember that so vividly at the, at the time, the, the, uh, the disdain that was shown for the returning veterans by the majority of the country. It was, it was an incredibly dark time in our, in our history. Well, I remember... Uh, so, you know, it, it, to follow up on that, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so, so incredibly appropriate that even this long time later that Vietnam veterans are getting the credit that they are due uh, in some small measure or some larger measures, but uh, uh, what a sacrifice the country made in the, in the, with the lives that they, uh, those young people gave at that time. Well, 58,000 roughly died directly in combat, yeah. but the, 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 what do we call it, the, uh, the residual yeah. damage to people. Yeah. It was in the hundreds of thousands. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the suicides yeah. and the yeah. and different things. So, the, yeah. Agent Orange. Oh, just I mean, just the mental, it, all kinds of things. But, yeah. So I really think, uh, and and there is a parade. Yeah, uh, parade. By the way, six o'clock. We yeah. should mention that. Yeah. Uh, it'll start out at the ground, and uh, I think I, I have a map here. It goes uh, down West Fifth Street, heads, heads north mm -hmm. uh, to Lafayette, goes across the block, and then comes back uh, on uh, West Park Avenue. So it's Fifth mm -hmm. Street and West Park Avenue. And uh, it starts at 6 o'clock, and it would be nice to go down there and just uh, show your support yeah, of the yeah. veterans. I think that would be a great it, idea. It would be incredibly uh, positive. And uh, I know that the Gravas worked very hard on this and put a lot of time and effort, manpower, all volunteer into this. And uh, uh, I, I hope there's a good turnout, and it would be great. You know, to wear something patriotic or wave mm -hmm. a flag or something would be very cool. We also have uh, the Exchange Club is handing out uh, flags to kids. Oh, cool! Uh, the small ones, of Good. course, a yeah. flag to wave, and yeah. uh, so they'll they'll be in the parade. And if along the way, if kids want a flag, they can just yeah. reach out and get one. Cool. So that that'd be really kind of nice. Yeah, it's something, and, and I really encourage everybody to go to the ground and see the yeah. exhibit. Uh, it'll be there for a year, I guess. This this exhibit will be there a year, and I, I will add that uh, they are selling. Days, if you will, you, like you said correctly, that the, you know the, the name of the exhibit is 365 and counting, uh, and I'll expound on that just a little bit. Is is you know, your your tour in Vietnam? When you went, you were guaranteed not to serve more than 365 days. Now I'm not sure if that held true with every single person that went there, but that's the reason for the name is 365 and counting. As you said, when a soldier uh, showed up in country, you started marking them off. Uh, so that's the reason for the name, and the Grout is trying to raise money to help fund this exhibit by selling days. So you can buy one of those 365 days for $100, uh, which is pretty cheap, uh, pretty cheap, and, and the Grout really appreciates it. And I think they've already sold almost 30 days worth, and they just started. So uh, if, if somebody's interested, when you, when you go to the Grout or if you want to stop by, you know, for 100 bucks you can uh, buy a day one of those 365 days. Now, I might add, just as we close on this subject, uh, isn't uh, the barbecue Lou the same night? I don't know. I, does that start? I think it does start this weekend. Yeah, I think it does. So you're I right. So you can go to the park and eat barbecue after the parade. <laughs> so well, it's good really catch, good. William, but, but you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it should yeah. be a, a great evening yeah. so for that. Yeah. Our, 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 my summer calendar is so incredibly full. There's so many events, and I tend, and, uh, and, and rank price starts this weekend. So. So there's, uh, you know, it's just going from one event to another. They're all fabulous. And there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, if you've just joined us, you're listening to the Mayor's Update. We're speaking to the Honorable Mayor Buck Clark. I'm William K., your host. Uh, another big thing, I thought was a big thing anyway, was the announcement of plans to uh, under, uh, being underway for a new marina yeah. over by the tech person. Yeah. Tell us about that. That sounds kind of really interesting. Well, you know, it's... <laughs> the news kind of jumped on that right away. And, and it's, we have always kind of had a marina on the, on the table. It hasn't been in the front of the table, it's been more on one of the back burners. But with the application that we uh, 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 submitted to the state for the Iowa Reinvestment District money, uh, 
uh, we included a marina in that project, which kind of forced the issue for us, which is a good thing, and put the marina, the marina more in the, at least maybe in the, the middle burner. It's not yet on the front burner, but we will have, uh, and there are plans on, uh, in the, uh, on the drawing board uh, that we have uh, uh, the plan for it to be just you say north or west of Manats, there along the river, there's a, 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 quite an area of city and uh, 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 the Alliance owns property right there, right on the river, which is where it will be. And what is planned is actually they'll have several slips for boats to dock at. Mm -hmm. There will be a marina building that will have fuel for sale and tackle and, and the stuff that you would expect uh, at, at a marina and a, a small, uh, which is going to kind of be called now the Fisherman's Cafe. So it'll be quite an addition to that area. I, I, I believe very strongly that we will move forward with that. I think that's probably a two or three year from now project to get kicked off, but uh, we're moving forward on that. At the same time, the plans for a hotel, restaurant, mm -hmm. and training center is still underway there for yes, the for the. the uh, yeah, Thanks, Brooks. yeah. And, and actually we have another meeting in Des Moines on this Friday to kind of solidify that funding package from the Iowa Reinvestment District. Uh, that's been, it's been worse than pulling teeth trying to get all the funding streams together for that. But we have a very committed developer that is still very committed to that project. That will happen. And we're also, I'm, I'm excited and I kind of want to let everybody know, we're still moving forward uh, fairly rapidly on a, on a downtown Whitewater uh, kayak course that we are going to, we've, we commissioned a consultant from Denver, Colorado that has built the Manchester one, the Charles City one, and so forth, and they have, have got a, a proposal for us that we will uh, see for the first time on the 28th, uh, which is a WDC Van Wall Day, and uh, that consultant will be here from Denver to kind of unveil that proposal, so I'm anxious to see what that looks like, but that's very much uh, on the very front burner right now as part of the downtown process. Well, what's, what's really nice about that is the, the new dam that we put yep. in does allow for yeah. uh, uh, white water. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was built intentionally with that north side of that to, to accommodate a, a kayak course, and this, uh, so we're moving forward on that. Now, if you have competitions, for example, we yeah. have a beautiful place to watch it because yes. the, the whole river really has places yes. that are almost like that you yeah. can watch the yeah. whole event going on. And, yeah. So there's some really great possibilities, I think, to bring in kayakers for competition and for recreation. We met with uh, the, uh, the Lori Everhart from the, the DNR, who manages George Whit Park, or the or parts mm -hmm. of the with here. And she said that the enthusiasm for kayakers is, is at an all-time high. That the number of boats or cars that bring boats into the George Whit area now that bring kayaks mm -hmm. has just exploded, mm -hmm. and as has been. Uh, borne out, these whitewater parks that have been built have been wildly successful. And we know that there are folks that, uh, they're you know, kind of like golf courses a little bit, that people will go play different golf courses, well people want to go to different kayak courses. Yeah, sure. So if you have one, you know, several in the region, people will come and they will go to all of those kayak whitewater parks in the region, and they're just being hugely successful, and we want to be a part of that. Well, and I'm speaking off the cuff now, but uh, I understand that we do have in the county a canoeing and kayaking trail yeah. that allows portages across mm -hmm. different places, and so you, you've got quite a, a lot of activities, and, and you can go through different kinds of water mm -hmm. uh, venues, so to speak. Yeah, there, there actually is a, an established and marked water trail, mm -hmm. just like there is a bike trail. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't canoe or kayak, so I don't know where it is, but I know it's there, and I know it gets used. Well, and you can talk to the DNR. You can call sure. uh, either Hartman Reserve, probably, or uh, George Wythe, and, mm -hmm. and uh, they can give you all kinds of information about that and some of the other activities that go on in the yeah. parks, too. So, uh, you know, we're very blessed to have both, uh, both George Wythe State Park and Hartman Reserve right yes. in our community because those are fabulous places. Mm -hmm. You know, much on that. You know, that you bring up, uh, you talk about Vanderwall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one, one thing I've, I know it's a Madison. Uh, um, based consultant that we use quite a bit. So can you tell us a little bit about them and about what they do? Mm -hmm. Well, Vanderwall is, a, is an urban design company that the city hired some 15 years ago now that we contra contract with them every year. They are urban planners and what they do for Waterloo is keep us focused and on track to develop particularly our downtown. Mm -hmm. 
uh, without a, an entity to keep us moving forward, to identify projects, to help us design them and do consulting for them, we would, we would lose track, we would lose focus uh, on, on some very important things uh, that have really helped to design and build our downtown. The Vandewall Company, and it's called that because the guy's name is Brian Vandewall, is the owner of the company, has really uh, shown their worth, William, over the years that that they bring a lot of imagination to our downtown. They bring a lot of design and, and so forth to our downtown. Uh, I, I would say that their, their, their really major function that I appreciate the most is that they just don't let us forget about things. They keep us on task. They keep challenging us to get better. They keep challenging us to know the value and the worth of a downtown and to have a river running right through it and how we can take advantage of that. Those are things that would uh, not happen if it wasn't for uh, Vanderbilt. Yeah, and uh, I, you know, I keep thinking about these things that they kind of come in my mind, like the boathouse, the new boathouse, yeah. for example. Mm -hmm. That's all part of really downtown activity. Absolutely it is, yeah. And the boathouse is another focus point of ours, as is San Susie Island, mm -hmm. uh, that we, we are working diligently towards the boathouse itself. The, the, the building is fabulous, mm -hmm. uh, but the grounds surrounding it are in need of some help. The parking lot, the drive, the river wall right there, mm -hmm. the, the, the ramp and the docks the, at that facility are less than what we would like. So we need to put some money and some effort into that. Vandewall is helping us with that. Vandewall is incredibly involved with this marina project that we talked about early, earlier. They are submitting drawings and, and design work for that, so they're incredibly involved with that. Well, there's a, it's interesting, too, because when we mentioned that, there's the, uh, the baseball stadium, Exchange yeah. Park, that whole area, uh, again, what we do from the boathouse on up the river is all park area yeah. that has a lot of venues. I know the Exchange Club is planning to put in a trike park for young kids. Cool. Uh, that's a, a new project, and uh, we'll be working with the city on that. Good. And that'll allow you to take your two, three, four, five-year-olds mm -hmm. and let them run around on uh, what looks like <laughs> looks like a little town or something like that. So. There's, there's a lot of activities. More and more activities are appearing in the community. Yeah. I think every year there's more and more things. Yeah. So We have, a, we have a, so much, William, to be thankful for and appreciative of. Uh, you know, there's, there's a handful of people that can't ever seem to find anything good to say about anything. Uh, thank goodness they are the mi minority. And uh, we have so many just incredibly Thing, uh, things to be positive uh, about in this city that we are just blessed with and we have so many hardworking people that that just keep moving that impetus forward. Uh, we have a, and I say this term all the time, but I believe it uh, with every fiber of my being, we have a, a very bright future in Waterloo and a lot of things to look forward well, to. Well, I want to mention something a little bit on that, a little segue on that too, is that uh, I've heard for years and years People on the north side of town say there's nothing to do, everything's on the south side of town. Yeah. Yet within a half a mile of where they live, yeah. there are festivals just about every Friday night, there's the Irish Fest, there's, there's all kinds of things yeah. going on. There's restaurants, there's places like the Platte Peacock for mm -hmm. shopping, there's all kinds of recreational facilities, mm -hmm. uh, and plus the river activities and the band, mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kinds of things to do in Waterloo, very, very close to the north side of town. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, it's a message I think I'd like to keep conveying yeah. because... Yeah. And, and I, I will echo that and strongly support that. Having said that, I do wish we could get some uh, more retail development up on uh, around the Logan Plaza area. Uh, and I think we are working very hard on that, and I think we will get there with that. Uh, I live over there. I, I would like to be able to go get a screw or a hammer uh, closer than driving to Crossroads. But, There's no question about uh, it. But uh, there is much, much, much to do in the, in the way of entertainment for folks that live on the north end, or the south end, or in the middle. Well, unfortunately, that Logan Plaza has been kind of a stumbling block, yeah. I think, to uh, commercial development because it takes a, it's a prime spot, and I don't think there's hardly anything there anymore. There is nothing there anymore, yeah. but we're working on that way. Yes, yeah, so yeah. this there's is a more to come on that. Okay, because we we actually hear about that because yeah. that that would be a, a big improvement yeah. if we yeah. do something with that area up there. Yeah. Uh, also, want to mention too that uh, we do have, uh, if I've got this right, the John Deere Two Cylinder Club. Uh, at the Cattle Congress has a uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday event there. It's uh, 
five dollars per person, or if you're a John Deere employee or a retiree with it with it, with an ID, you can get in for free. Also, uh, the John Deere um, uh, Tractor and Engine Museum uh, mm -hmm. opened up uh, what last fall, but mm -hmm. that's uh, a, mm -hmm. a very attractive place. Mm -hmm. I just want to mention too the thing about the uh, the Tech Works, uh, where they're going to have a hotel, restaurant, and and a training center. John Deere attracts. Well, I think the Northeast site is the largest tourist attraction, maybe in the state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It brings in tremendous amounts of people. Yeah. John Deere himself brings in dealers and mechanics and different people from all over the world actually sure. here. So yeah. uh, this is a big boon economically and as far as uh, helping with the downtown. Uh, yeah. This is, this is going to be a, that, that That campus, William, when it gets developed, and it will get developed. It, it's, you know, like we touched on it briefly earlier, but it, it's been a challenge. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have such a committed developer, I don't think it would have happened. I think it would have fallen off. But it hasn't, and we keep getting closer. Every single day we get closer to that campus becoming a reality with the hotel, the training center. Uh, just everything that's going on on that TechWorks campus is going to be so incredibly positive for this community. And it's going to be hard to measure. It's going to be, it, it, it'll be catalytic, and I hate to use that word because I've used it in other projects, but every project gets bigger, it seems like, and that one, boy, that'll be a big deal. That'll yes. be a huge deal when that thing gets And started. our appreciation to John Deere, of course, yeah. for their part in, in, yeah, in, uh, in doing that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of close up, but I want to make maybe a few comments toward the end here. Um, we, are, we are running out of time. Uh, we've been talking to the mayor, Buck Clark, and as usual, it's always a pleasure to talk to you Thank here you and get people a chance to hear uh, things uh, when you're not at City Council. Mm -hmm. um, and we thank our listeners for, for uh, their participation in listening to our show. Uh, be sure to take an active interest in what's going on in the city. You can watch meetings available on YouTube or through the city's website. Or keep informed by reading the newspaper. If you have concerns or questions, be sure to contact your council representative or the appropriate city department. Information can be found on www.cityofwaterlooiowa.com or search for the City of Waterloo, Iowa. Uh, we have a participatory government, so please evaluate the issues, discuss them with your friends and family, make your concerns known, and in every election, vote. It's your right, your privilege, and your duty. And we do have an important election coming up. We've got a number of candidates. I think we're going to be having some forums here on the radio Good. to introduce some of the candidates who are running for council and for mayor. So it should be a very interesting uh, transition. I know we're going to miss you. Well, I will miss the job, but uh, I'm also looking forward to spending some family time. <laughs> I can imagine. And maybe you can sleep in the morning. Yeah. And, to do that. So as a final note, we have underwriters that support this public radio station. Be sure to thank them for their support when you visit their establishments or, or uh, organization. And as you can be a supporter as well, consider keeping us on the air by making a financial contribution of any amount. It's really important. Until next time, keep in mind that city business is your business, so be sure to mind your business. This has been the Mayor's Update. I'm William Kay, and you're listening to KBBG 88.1 FM Waterloo, and good day. Do I sound like a professional radio person? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to kick I love doing this. and uh, yeah. It's it's not as easy as people think because it's not like I invite you over to my living room and we just talk. Right. Uh, right. I do no. have to have some structure. And no, and I know you do. And you do a very good job of it, William. And that's, uh, you know, it is. The filing time is what? Mid August, uh, I think the mid September or early September for the candidates. I'm assuming you'll start having forums and stuff right after that. And, 